Hi, guys. Hi, Tom. Good How day. are you? How, I'm pretty good. Uh, Pat, how am I doing with the, the calling this thing what it is? I called it a play. Uh, I think you covered all the bases on that one. I mean, I'm still trying to figure it out myself. Yeah? I, it's, uh, yeah, there's a, it's a complex... I, I don't think... You said that we created it, and I feel like, you know, we were the root of the creation, but the... Chris Abraham and, and our writer Zach. I don't even know Zach's Zach last name. Zach Russell. Zach Russell, of course. Of the, the terrier. Yeah, yeah, they were the. <laughs> he's a bit of a terrier. <laughs> so, yeah, that's right. Yeah, he is. Uh, no, they were really in, in, instrumental in making this happen because I don't think we would have done it on, on our own. Oh, we definitely wouldn't have yeah. done it on our own. Yeah. Is that so? Because it felt, it felt very, like, it felt when you were watching it that it, it felt very much of you guys. It felt like it came from you. It is. It does come from us, but it's, um, we, we needed friends, we needed teammates to make it into something else because it was just our lives <laughs> you know it wasn't like we were we are a band and we make music um but we've been together so long and like any team or any family or any group of people that have decades behind them uh there's a long and deep story there about how it how you manage to maintain it and mm -hmm. how you stick together and uh chris abraham is a dear friend of mine and worked with me on true crime which was my solo show pardon me <clears throat> and um so I, uh, I was talking to him about stars and about where we were at in our lives and wh what our plans were. And, you know, he started asking me questions about what it was like to, to be in this group of people who are still trying to make a living together and still trying to make art together and, mm. and still be a family. And, and those conversations really led to him being fascinated with the idea of trying to tell the story of what it meant to be in this band. And, and Torquil, obviously you come from theater. You mentioned you're at the show. You, you, you talk about your father at one point um, in, in the film, and you talk about how you come from generations of, of theater. Yeah. Pat, for the other folks in the band, I mean, uh, there is sort of an ongoing joke about Torquil forcing you to do the play, but uh, I'm, I'm not sure. So how... untrue, by the <laughs> way. It wasn't. I, I don't think, I think Tork was as, adver as adverse to the situation as the rest of us were as well. But it, it, must have been, it must have been very different for you then, I mean, not coming from a theater background. It was as different as it could possibly be. I mean, the analogy, I've been trying to figure out an analogy for it. And for me, it's like, say you play hockey your whole life and you're on a hockey team and that's what you've done. And then like Nick Nurse comes in one day and says, <laughs> guys, I want you to play basketball now. And right. you have no you have three experience weeks. <laughs> in playing basketball. You have no interest in playing basketball. Yeah. Uh, but that's it kind of muscles you into it. And it just, super it's super bizarre. Something I've never had any interest in doing in my entire life. And how you and, find it? Ooh, it's in, it's exhausting. It's one of the most exhausting experiences I've ever had. I can't believe, like, being a musician, the luxury of being a musician is you get to be lazy all the time, mm -hmm. I find. And uh, you can't be lazy in theater. It's no. insane how no. hard these people work. It's the doing of it um, that is everything in theater. You know, they call it acting because it means taking action. And taking action is an exhausting thing to do. It can be scary. It can fill you with doubt. It can be um, misjudged. Uh, and no matter what action you take, you know, you look at someone like Greta Thunberg, you would think that a 16-year-old girl who had changed the world and was talking about existential crisis and, and encouraging us all to act as a team would receive unadorned love. Mm -hmm. But every time you put your neck out there, there's somebody who's going to take a shot at you. So being an actor, I think, is a, is a very brave thing to do. And I think, it, if, I, if I can say, I think the band have been incredibly brave. And one of the big takeaways for me from this project has been renewed love and admiration for my band members as artists, as people who are willing right. to be brave and willing to do things that they're scared of. But in order to do that, I mean, and to speak about bravery, I mean, you, you can be an actor and you can do, you know, the seagull or you, or you, or you can do, um, I don't know, I'm, I can't No sex, it. please, we're British. <laughs> <laughs> but there's another thing, there's another thing to do a play or, or a stage work where you guys... Have, Talk about real things, and and, and Mitch, yeah. our producer, is a, is, a, is a longtime really big stars fan, and he he knows sort of the the inner workings of the band, and, and a pal of mine, and then throughout the well, you know, yeah, yeah. and you know what, I'll mine. give you your ten bucks a little later. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Happy birthday, buddy. <laughs> so I, <laughs> but I so I would occasionally turn to him and go, really. And he goes, right. yeah, yeah, that happened. Right. And right. I, I just want to give an example here. I don't want to give too much away, but I mean, everything's in this play from a sort of 
a, a love triangle and affair that happens within the band, a confrontation with Spotify staff at the Spotify <laughs> office in New York, <laughs> to the, I mean, the tragic death of a fan from Suicide who quoted Starr's lyrics before they died. And these were just moments where I would turn to Mitch, our producer, and go, really? And he said, yeah. And Torque, it's one thing to live through those things. It's another thing to, to, to tell everybody about them, act them out again on stage and feel those emotions again. Well, why was that important? Why was it important? Um, I think that, well, I think in order to answer that, I have to answer more generally, which is to say that storytelling is important because it's how we understand each other mm -hmm. and how it's how we understand that we're not alone. Um, because I think that despite the fact that being in a band obviously has a, a lot of unique things about it, it also is very much like everything else that people do in their lives, trying to make things work with each other, trying to forgive each other, trying to get over hard stuff is a universal experience. And storytelling and using your own experience to share with other people makes them feel less alone. And I think that's always been Star's mission, if we have one, and, and our, our mandate is to make our listener feel like they're not alone. That's what music's always done for me. It's what bands have always done for me. Even mm -hmm. when I was at my most lonely in my teenage years, I felt like I had a gang to belong to. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, I think that the experience of going out at night, spending your money, getting into your good shirt, you know, going yeah. out with your friends and taking that step out is a brave one. And, and, and it's a reaching for something, for connection. Right. So it's a simple answer, but I think that's really what it is. But, but when you do, when you... <laughs> When you have these experiences, when you go through something hard like a loss or a, you know, a death or, or a fight or, or a problem with your friends, typically those are hard enough feelings that you only have to live them once. Yeah. And then to have to do them again. But let me tell you, this has been <clears throat> another huge thing that has been so great for me in doing this play. I'm going to start a company. You know how there's like vanity uh, presses, you know, where you can go and tell somebody the story of your life and they write it down for you and then you put out yeah. your biography, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. the retired see president. You, of, I see you've read my book. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah I will. I swear to God. It's on my nightstand. <laughs> yeah, it's on my, it's um, on my Kindle, it's I promise. It's on my Kindle. <laughs> but, but I want to start a company that helps people do a play of their lives mm. because once you, like, for example, me and Pat in the show uh, enact a fight. Yeah. That we have had many times in our life about politics, about our approach to life, about the way to express yourself. It's and the same fight. It's the no same fight. No matter what we're fighting about. Yeah. It's the same fight. But I think I can speak for both of us when I say I don't know that we'll ever have that fight again. But because by repeating it, even when we don't feel like doing it, by mm. standing apart from it, it suddenly makes you realize this dumb, simple revelation, which is your behavior is a choice. Yeah, well, <laughs> the things you do are a choice. And what I mean, we we were talking about. I was trying to remember the last time we really had a full on blowout. Like yeah, we, it's been. I can't remember really the last time, but I mean, hasn't been that long. It hasn't, it hasn't been that long. <laughs> Hours, but Come it's on, like really, you know. But it was funny when we were writing it. You know, Chris wanted to know about our fights, and so he said, "Well, can you guys have a fight right, right. now?" And right. so we were in the studio, like, "Yeah, sure." So we. <laughs> Pulled up, a fight. Pulled, a really? topic, pulled up a topic yeah. and had a fight. We wanted to, yeah, we it took should, us a few minutes to get going, but right, right. I we're, can we're, always I'm, get his go. Yeah, we were thinking we should put together a medley of our best <laughs> fights over the years and go and take that on the road even. Yeah, yeah. Just call it yeah. Two Angry Men. But, yeah. you, but, you, yeah. but you say, I think that's on the CBC, but you say um, at one point, you, 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 Pat, you say you don't even like to perform that fight in the play. And I, I, I believe there must be some truth well, to that. Yeah, I mean, it's never fun to fight. No one likes fighting with anybody. But the funny thing about our fights is we can fight. Like, we we can really light it up. But then at the end... It's completely... It's, it's just, oh, we just sit down and we yeah. sort of look. It's ridiculous. And we're not... Like, there's no, there's yeah. no hard... I mean, there's hard feelings, but there's no hard feelings. Like, we're over it. And, like, doing it every night, it is hard to muster up that energy. And I think that was what Chris has been trying to pull out of us is the most... He, you might slip up and say something that's reveal something that's uncomfortable for you, and then he'll just latch onto that and throw it in your yeah. face and make it uncomfortable for you every day, and make it, and want you to make it more uncomfortable for yourself every night. Mm -hmm. And you just like more anger, more of this, more of that, and it's just, I mean, it's punishing, but it's, I guess that's what he's theater a relentless is all about. pursuer of of drama and of you know his yeah. his big thing is like theater comes from conflict. You know, you can't have a story without a conflict. And so he is 
always in search of conflict. Even in my solo show, he was in search of the conflict within me, right. you know. But I, I think that I think there has been a truly um, good therapeutic result of us doing this together. I think on given days, um, for Chris, say, or for anybody in the band, it's difficult sometimes to revisit the pain that we've all been through together mm. and the things that have almost torn us apart. Uh, on the other hand, we're doing it together. And I think that's, you know, the show, we couldn't really think of another title because at the end of the day, it is this examination of like how we all survive, which is is not alone, right? Mm -hmm. You're not going to survive alone. So um, I think there's a real healing in it too. For and, us. and I think that's, the, that, unfortunately, I mean, this is sort of my pet project that I keep on talking about on the show seemingly without any uh, no one can seem to stop me from talking about it <laughs> well, um, you're the host what yeah, are they going to yeah, do exactly I know well, run here in here and tackle you they can't do that <laughs> yeah, well, they thought about it the, <laughs> the door is barricaded yeah. so the the <laughs> But I, I have a real problem with the sort of pedestal that we can sometimes put artists that we love on, you know? That yes, I, that, that we indeed. See, that we see them as God. When I hear the term, like, he's, he or she is a, is a guitar god. or Big mistake. A, a, a legend or an icon. Flips me out, always leads to bad stuff. Look what happened with Morrissey. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. well, yeah, we could talk about that. Still recovering yeah, from that. <laughs> I can tell you're dressed all in black today. Yes, it's beautiful. I'm in mourning for my life. <laughs> but I, it, it made me think that I'm, listen, I'm, I've been in a band and, and you know, I'm, I'm in one. And I know that what being in a band actually is. It's a lot of fighting. It's a lot of disagreeing it's a lot it's of, a lot of doubt yeah it's a lot of doubt a lot of love for one yeah. another and i thought there was something so powerful about the audience being able to see that like you don't have to be this perfect created apotheosis of you know creativity that you can be flawed challenging fighting people and still make I'm wondering beautiful if things it's, if it's detrimental it's like <laughs> i like mythologizing the bands i love and i've always had this feeling about the bands i love and i and revealing their humanity i'm wondering if that is Almost. Well, that's too sort much, of that's sort it? of the e the the like mid zone that stars exist in. I think that we have always, despite ourselves, been unable to help it. Yeah. We're just we're a punk band. We don't sound like a punk band, but we are a punk band. We don't know how to do anything except be ourselves, and we do have a kind of um, overwhelming drive to connect with our listeners and to make them understand that we are like them. Yeah, we are uh, high we're stars and so are you yeah, on top of every show. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And 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 yet I think we we all grew up in and in an era when rock stars were godlike and 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 they and then having that kind of heroism in your life gives you an aesthetic and gives you something to shoot for and mm. um that you know that David Bowie um was a kind of perfect being in some strange way, like to, like an alien, you know, mm -hmm. which he kind of acknowledged in his work. Um, but we're not that kind of band. We're a, we're a dirty little punk band. And what those bands do, f what people like Billy Bragg or Jonathan Richmond have done in my life for me is show me that perfectly ordinary people are beautiful. Mm -hmm. I'm a perfectly ordinary person, just like everybody else, mm -hmm. and we're beautiful, all of us, and we're broken, all of us, and we all want to connect, and we all want to be more beautiful. And art is this little sort of band-aid you can put over your soul that allows you to try again, you know, to be more beautiful. And that's what STARS has been there for people, I hope, in their lives, that's what we've done for them, and that's what they've done for us. I, I got an idea of how this play has sort of changed your dynamic within the band, or how you think about the band, or, or with one another, at Torkel. But uh, Pat, how about you? Do you do you feel changed as a Stars member just by doing this project, where you get to act as yourself as a Stars member? Yeah, I mean, who knew how difficult it was to act yourself? Like that's <laughs> what's taken us months to figure out how to come up with some and it's very I mean there's a sort of a wonder then I don't even feel like it is myself because I spend the entire time screaming it's insane and I try and avoid in my life I try to avoid screaming all the time but it's I was just thinking about this the other night and the thing that it's really it's made me imp appreciate being in a band again like yeah. it's made me like I'm like thank god I'm in a band yeah. and I'm not in theater, <laughs> you know? like this is, it's like wow, it's really, it is actually really great being in it, and you can lose sight of that so quickly because there's a lot of. But there's, theater there's a lot can of be tough like stuff. a band. I'm I know, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not. No, I see it. No, I see it. No, I see it. I'm gonna head out for a little while. There's a, no, no, there's a, there's a family that exists within it. You know what I mean? And I see that. I understand now. I understand why people do theater. I didn't understand why people do it before because. 
it, it is, it's this, it's this gang of people trying to do something impossible to, together, for lack yeah. of a better word, together. Like it, it just keeps coming up. Do you, you know? Do you feel like you're going to be? It'll be different on the bus or in the van next time you guys are all together. After I this? don't think so. I think it's just going to be. I think we're going to go back. You know, like we'll, we'll, so I think we'll have a nice reflection after this and be like, that was nice. But then we're going to get back in the can and it's just going to be like, oh, here we go. The the. The well, cycle repeats. I'll share something real with you. Okay. okay, so the other day, we haven't fought at all in this process, okay? We really have gotten along amazingly well. But the other day, me and Amy had our first fight during the process. Mm-hmm. And it got uncomfortable in the room. And everybody was there. Chris was there, and the writer, Zach, was there, and the stage management, everybody, the whole team were there. And eventually, Chris tried to peacemake for a little while, but eventually he got pissed off and was like, okay, we're leaving. You guys have to work this out because we're not getting any work done right now. Come find us when you're done with this nonsense. So everybody just got up and left us alone. Oh my God. And there we sat, the six of us, with our nonsense yet again, you know, and we crushed it. You know, we crushed it. We found a way to turn to each other and be like, well, this isn't going to work. Right. We're not going to sit in this because there's people who are counting on us. There's people we respect that we're working with. We're wasting their time. We're wasting our time. And anyway, I love you. Yeah. And whatever you did and whatever I did is so minute compared to that love. Let's just apologize and move on, right. you know? And I, I, I sort of disagree with Patty. I mean, I think our patterns will always be the same because we are a family and how do you break out yeah. of family patterns? But I think maybe I'm hoping down the road that this play will give us long into the future a sense of what it means to be each other. And to um, kind of be able to occupy each other's shoes a little better. Let's take a listen to some music. Take a listen to this. Ageless, ageless beauty from love the stars. S- love the snare sound on that. So That's good. great snare sound. How can I say I love I love a long melody over yeah. over or it's a sort fast. of a Bach type melody. Isn't yeah, it? it's isn't bit it of beautiful? a chorale. I love it, man. Yeah. If you're just tuning in, my name's Tom Power. I'm speaking with Torkel Campbell and Pat McGee of Stars, the brand new theatrical experience. Stars together playing now at the Streetcar Crow's Nest in Toronto, Ontario. They're also releasing a brand new best of record this Friday called LaGuardia. So talk to me about this thing when you when you listen back to. A best of record of your work. What do you hear? Good band, man. Yeah. Really good band. Good singles band. Um, what do I hear? I hear a bunch of hit singles that... Uh, We're never hit singles. That, 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 uh, that, as I like to term them, the cloth-eared morons in charge of commercial radio <laughs> were unable to... And I say that with all love and respect, and I'll see you guys at the next Junos, but you really do need to get some ears. Um, <laughs> Com- but, com- uh, just so my boss is a commercial radio. He's a commercial, commercial radio. He said commercial radio. Are you kidding me, yeah, CBC? Co- I got all the love in the world for you guys. That's good. That's good. We Pay inserted taxes, that afterwards, people. by the way. We inserted yeah. that afterwards. Pay your great. taxes, everybody. <laughs> my ch- kid needs to eat. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, I hear a band that has always tried to be beautiful. Uh, that's definitely something I hear. But also a rock and roll band, which I think maybe is something that people might have missed a bit about us is that we have a great rhythm section, we have a tough rhythm section, and um, we have a bunch of guys who come from from playing rock. Um, And that what I like about our band, if I may be so (laughs) egotistical, is that there's two fairly delicate singers uh, working pretty delicate melodies over quite tough music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's musically what I hear. Pat, Pat, I mean, is it a a bit of a... I don't know, how, how do I put this? Is, is, is it a bit of a sign? Is it a bit of a, a marker the, of a, a greatest hits record, a best of record? I th- yeah, I think so. I mean, I was, again, I was, I was skeptical. I kind of feel like I was worried that it was a death knell to a certain degree, but really? I don't think it is. I mean, what were you worried about? Rio, I, I just had to keep going back to the Rio Statics first record called Greatest Hits and be like, <laughs> like the, I was just like, you know what? It doesn't. I just feel like we've never, 
Well, our second I don't, I don't EP know. was it, called the Comeback EP. So. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I, I just... It was, it, you know, in hindsight, it was nice to do, to, to go through the music and see what, what were the, I, I felt like the strongest pop songs, because that's what we are. You know, we diverge every once in a while and meander through some more, you know, esoteric kind of music, but mostly what we try and focus on is pop music for people. And I think that's what this collection is, is a collection of our most focused pop music that yeah. we've been trying to write for years and it was and it's cool and we got you know what there's 20 songs on there like yeah. it's pretty good man we've written a lot of songs yeah and it's uh it's, it's it was a nice look back answer me this if you were to throw 19 of the songs on this thing away and keep one of them oh you mm. jerk Thank you for saying jerk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know, Canadian I don't, broadcast. I don't want to give the conservative party any ammunition. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, Their file on me is already done. But what's the one, Patty? You go first. I can't. I mean, I don't even think it's on the record. <laughs> you know. I think it's hold on when you get love and let go when you give it in a way. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's, we kind of said that was sort of, a lot. That, that feels like the mission statement of the band. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, that feels like yeah. it kind of summarizes it. But you know, I, I think that's true. Maybe it's not even on the record. It's like I, I think that um, I think hold on when you get love and let go when you give it, it is a place to begin with stars and kind of a place to end. And in between, there's a lot of darkness. So I think it's maybe the song that we want to represent us the most because mm-hmm. it's an optimistic song and it's uh, a rallying cry and it's a happy thing to know that you have the weakest thing in you and that you can beat the bastards with it. You know, that whatever is inside you that you feel is most broken is the most beautiful part of you too is a great message to share with people. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think kind of your ex-lover is dead. I think maybe I, I have to admit is the song that is bigger than the band. Yeah. You know, yeah. that has expanded past the band. I don't know if I told you this before, but you sang that song. So I was when, when I found out Barack Obama had been uh, named president of the United States. We were in Newfoundland. I was at that show. I announced it, and you announced it on stage and went into your ex lover is dead uh, in that moment, <laughs> and it was just. <gasps> Did I get it, dedicate it to George W. Bush? I, I think you might have. I think you might have. But I've just never. I've never. Everyone from Hey Rosetta came out on stage. Yeah, and we, yeah. We all sang that it together. That was a great night. It was a really beautiful night. Remember, remember how hopeful we were. Yeah, buddy, I try to keep a little oh, bit of that in here. I'm trying. Um, Pat, I'll, I'll go out on you, though. So let, let's, I'll give you maybe the easier and the harder one, then. Any Great. tune, we're going to end this interview with a song from Stars. Any song from any catalog, from any record. And maybe this is an opportunity to talk about a song that maybe we didn't pay enough attention to. I'm going to have to go with my lady love's favorite song, which is I think is Look Up. Mm, that's a beautiful song. Yeah. Tell, uh, tell me about that one. Um... There's something Harper. It's there's a darkness to it that I really like. There's an oddness. There's a cl- there's a Brahms you, sample. It, well, yeah, like the uh, uh, what do you call it? The n- powdered another one wig, of those. Yeah, another powdered Brahms. wig. <laughs> a classic example of powdered wig pop. Yes. that stars has been so great. But to, it's also uh, like Amy. Amy has always provided uh, the hope in the band lyrically. She's a very optimistic person. I love that about her. Mm-hmm. That's a line from the play. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's also true. And I think Look Up is a is a kind of quintessential star song in the sense that like things suck sometimes the snow falls the winter gets cold people leave you people quit on you people die you doubt yourself you fear the future but life is beautiful and you're beautiful and that's kind of what we want to tell people in our music thanks for coming in guys